Okay, so welcome you guys to today's uh, um, today's uh, outing, today's webinar session. Uh, I'm very happy today is a, we are getting to the end of it. Today is the last session. The program was started since 4th of June till today being July 8th. So it's something that uh, I give God the glory that we've taken our time to do this from beginning till now and uh, we've not had any challenges. And I'm be I believe that today's one will also go smoothly like other ones have been going. So I welcome you guys to today's program. And uh, I'm happy that today we have some uh, scholars and some guest speakers in our midst. And uh, in fact, today's own is gonna be a little bit more of a um, contributions. After the speaker has finished speaking, um, uh, other scholars will present and say other things. So today's one, since it is the last day, we might uh, take a little bit longer than we used to take so that we will have enough time because after now, you guys will now be on your own. You will start, uh, you will now start recalling all we've taught you from week one till now and start putting them down with your pen and paper and start preparing yourselves for the uh, applications because very soon applications will start. I believe that by the next two to three months, everywhere will be open. Uh, Chivening, I have I've seen online. I think Chivening, I don't I think Chivening's date. Um, I think is it was is it third or second? I think I don't know, but I've I'm not yet. But I know that Chivening starts their application around August, first week of August, and by September, the Commonwealth application starts, and then there are other applications, and then universities in the US and other places. So that's why we decided to do this program so that we get you guys prepared and push you guys to start. I want to go up the competition no. please can you mute yourself zoom user if you enter please you mute yourself so um i welcome everyone to this program and uh, before i i invite the guest speak the, the guest speaker for today i want to uh bring to the stage um a special guest who will just tell you guys hi before we continue uh, his name is uh, June. He's, a South, he's from South Africa, and uh, he recently uh, volunteered to contribute to the growth and development of young people in Africa. So, uh, uh, June, if you are if you are open, if you are there, can you just uh, unmute yourself and say hi to all the participants? You are welcome. You have the floor. Hello, everyone. And thank you so much for Stanley's kind words. I look forward to uh, discussing some pointers on the statement of purpose a little bit later. And it's great to be here. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for coming. So um, now before, uh, okay, so I have to share my screen and uh, uh, introduce our speaker. We have a potential fellow today in our midst, a very young man. I call him gentleman to the core. He's a very nice guy. One of my, let me call him one of my mentors in those days. Uh, Samuel, he, in those days I used to disturb him. When I was he, when I was in Nigeria applying, I was searching for this uh, Commonwealth uh, scholarship then. And then uh, he was uh, taking his program and every time I come to his DM, I tell him he will always reply. So today, uh, I he's my very good friend, and we are here together to do this program. So Samuel is a Samuel is a recent MSc bio, bio, biotechnology graduate from University of Chester, United Kingdom, with a biology with a biochemistry undergraduate. Samuel has won prestigious scholarships. Mm -hmm. 
So when I give you the training results or the knowledge that you sorry, that's please kindly you meet yourself. Please kindly meet yourself. This is the same thing we always say all the time. When I was in when I was when I was when I was in, in, in one of my programs, if you do this kind of thing, the, the speaker will just remove you. And when they remove you, you can never come back again. Please meet yourself. I wouldn't want to be doing that. Zoom user, meet yourself. I will remove you. If you don't meet yourself, I will remove you. And if I remove you, you will not come back again. You will not be able to join again. If you just come, you meet yourself. OK. We are sorry for that. So as a matter of fact, Someone has won prestigious national and international scholarships during his studies, including the Commonwealth Share Scholarship, Queen Elizabeth Commonwealth Scholarship, the NMPC Total National Merit Scholarship Award, and many other non-academic awards of excellence in leadership. I don't know why people were not here. I will remove, let me remove this person. Um, I, I think it's okay if you just uh, meet them or you could give me the co-host ability and I can do that for you. Okay, let me, after introducing someone, I'll, I'll do that now. So, someone is passionate about biomedical <laughs> research with specific interest in molecular toxicology, cancer research, drug discovery, and therapies. Therapeutics. Currently, he's interning at Helix. Yeah, he's interning at Helix Biogen Institute, where he's applying in silicon techniques for vaccine design. Epidemic Neurological investigations and cancer therapy. Someone is an ardent lover of quality education and youth development. Therefore, he has facilitated community development projects which provided primary education of, for homeless children and has provided guidance to graduate scholarships enthusiasts through his personal engagements and social media platform, which has resulted in multiple scholarship awards for all his beneficiaries. Ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome on stage Samuel Enejo Ako to come and speak to us. Samuel, you have the floor right now. You're welcome. Hello. Can yeah. you hear me clearly? Yeah, we can hear you correctly. Yeah, we can no, hear you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Let um, me, let me, I think I have to stop sharing, right? Yeah, yeah so I can. So I can. Okay. Yeah. Just a minute, please. Oh, it seems you are still sharing your screen. Have you? Yeah, no, no, no. I have stopped sharing my screen. I have okay. stopped sharing my screen. Can you still see my screen now? I don't think so. Okay, I have stopped sharing it. Yeah. Yeah. You can share from your end.
because I made I made I made the Zoom link that anybody can share. So okay, okay. Um sorry for the break transmission. I think it's logged me out. I think the service is still messing up with me. Um can you share from your end, Stanley? Okay, okay, that okay, you sent it to me, right? Yeah. Okay, let me try and uh, let me try and share it from my hand. I have to I have to download the way so let me just um okay so Can you see my screen from there? Okay, okay, wait, let me share. You can see it now, right? Yes. 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 Okay, sorry for the the glitch for the service that is messing up everything. Um I'm Samuel and Joako and I'm a Commonwealth Scholar uh, from 2021. And obviously I'm a Commonwealth Scholar for life. Um, and today I'll be speaking on addressing the essay questions of the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, these are what we'll be considering briefly today. We're looking at the overview of um, the, the Commonwealth Scholarship and we'll go on to talk about the eligibility and selection process. Then we'll talk about the general essay guidelines. Then we have a two part session where we discuss vividly how to write both essays. Um, composed of 11 essays in total. Then the acknowledgement session of the people involved with this and a take home message. Next slide. Next slide. So um, we'll, be, we'll be looking at the overview First of all, let, like us to know um, why I'm doing this. We would have just gone to start talking about the ACEs, but it's important for we to understand what this scholarship is about before while talking about the ACEs. Because um, in, in doing a thing, if the purpose of a thing is not known, you will not know how to go about it. Abuse is inevitable. So it's best we know what this scholarship entails and what is required of us. So if you are writing the ACEs, it will be channeled towards the objective of the scholarship or the funding. So first of all, I'd like us to know that the Commonwealth Shared Scholarship is a developmental scholarship and is, is given to talented individuals with potential from low and medium income countries, and in order for these individuals to secure a master's admission and funding in the UK, in order to acquire skills and requisite knowledge to address a developmental problem in their home country. Next. So it's crucial for you to understand this because if you don't understand this context, you'll not be able to channel your ACs enough to address that particular problem which is, is predominant in, your, in the home country, which they are funding you for. And of course, it's funded by, it's a joint, um, jointly funded scholarship by the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office um, in partnership with the approved UK universities. Then 
I also want to point to the fact that admission application to the chosen university is important. Okay. Why is this important? It's because I initially said that it's a joint, it's a jointly sponsored scholarship, which um, is a participation between the Commonwealth Commission, which is a part of the UK Foreign Com Commonwealth and um, Development Office, and the UK universities. So basically, the UK universities do the nomination. So you apply to the scholarship separately, then you apply for admission separately. It's on the basis of that, that the school will be able to look at your entire application that's inclusive of your admission. It's very important because most people miss out on, they are just concerned about the ACs. Meanwhile, the school also selects based on the application. So what you are saying, um, the, the, the write-up you submit to the portal, if it's not, if what you submit to uh, for admission is not, it's not same similar story, then it means uh, your intention is not genuine. And that's how some people get kicked out. So I want you to understand this fact. Then um, you obviously need to be a citizen or um, a refugee, a refugee status holder in a particular um, low development, low or medium income country for you to be eligible. So you need a valid identity which could be your passport or the national ID as the CSE stated. Next, please. So I want us to look at the eligibility um, criteria. First of all, next. So for you to be eligible, you need to be a citizen or a refugee status holder, and you must have a permanent residence within the eligible Commonwealth country then also you need to be available to start the, the academic um, year in the UK, which is usually September. Some programs go as far as October, but ideally September, October, you should have completed your program. That's if you are in still like your final undergraduate year, you should have completed it and be ready to start as at September or October, depending on your program then you must also hold a first degree, which should be, um, it should be either you have a first class or you have a second class of which is two one, or you have a lower, like second class lower, which is two two and with a master's. That means if you have two two, you should have a master's to augment for that, then you are eligible. Then you must not have studied or worked within the UK for like an academic year. So if you have all of these, those are the basic eligibility criteria. Next slide. So um, upon what basis, can you go to the previous slide? Upon what basis is, uh, is the selection made? The, the CSC, the Commonwealth um, Scholarship Commission has already stated there are three basic criteria for selecting successful applicants. First of all, it's based on academic merit. So you should, it, it means you should have like a strong academic background, yeah, which they have listed initially. So this ranges from your grade, your, your research experience, your publication, it's a whole lot, it's a combination of the academic merit. Then also the quality of the plan of study. And this is part of your essay in terms of what you want to study and why you are studying that. So you need to know, you need to, you need to know this. I need to know um, the, the third one, which is the potential impact on the development of the country's home country. So like your study, what impact will it have when you return to your home country? So that's another key factor. So based on these three criteria that they select eligible candidates. Next slide. So I'll be talking about the GNIAC guidelines. Um, first of all, I'd like to give a disclaimer here that the views that have been expressed here are the views from my personal experience 
and from the experiences of other Commonwealth scholars who, who have applied for this scholarship and obviously was successful. So first of all, I'd like you to understand that you should avoid writing generic statements. It's very, it's very important. You know, um, sometimes when you see um, some, some essays, that it's really not specific. Like you're just saying general things. For example, you, you can just say, okay, this particular disease is serious. So if, if, you, if you are saying, okay, this particular disease is predominant in a particular nation, how specific is that? It's kind of general. So it will not give, it's not going to give the selection committee enough reason to choose you. Because if you want to say it's, it's serious, what's the data talking about? What is the statistic showing? How, how is the statistic telling the, the intensity or the seriousness of that particular disease? So you need to avoid gener generic statistics. Then you also need to avoid over technical statements. You know, you, have, you, you come from different fields and the selection committee might not be from your field. So there are technical terms, you need to explain them in a, in a statement or two, or you can place it in bracket and give more explanation so they will understand in layman what you're talking about. Then secondly, use data in order to evidence a particular problem. So if you are saying this is a problem, what's the data talking about? So write in terms of data, quantify as much as possible. It's very important when it comes to explaining a particular problem or the impact of your work. Then the other point I'd like us to, to look at is that you should adopt the star approach. Star approach does the situation, the facts, action and results. So what's the background? For example, if I'm trying to explain a particular experience, what's the background for that? For that experience? And what, what needed to be done? That, that talks about the tax. Then the action talks about what you did in that context. And the result is the outcome, what you achieved at the end of your engagement with that situation or scenario. So it's good you, you always use the star approach. Then um, when talking about goals or plans, all of that, you need to, to, to ensure that these goals are smart. What does it mean to be smart? If you, it means like the goal should be specific, should be measurable, it should be achievable. That's, is it realistic enough? So for example, we are talking about a robust plan that should span five years. And you are saying you are going to achieve all of this in a year. Is that realistic? You need to look at what you write again and see if it's actually realistic, if this can be achieved. And George, George, please, can you mute yourself? I'm meeting him. I'm not aware of this. Let me meet him. Oh, yeah, sorry okay. about that. So the, the, the other point I would say is it time like it should it should be time bound. So if you're talking about a goal, particular goal, it should have timeline attached, allocated to it. Then I also encourage, you know, some people get samples from um, online, I always, this, I, I always discourage people from doing that. Because first of all, there's a high chance for you to plagiarize, writing the same thing to um, the selection committee, which will put you off completely. Trust me, the UK is, um, the UK as well as developed countries, they, they always try to encourage you to write in your own words and don't copy other people's work. So don't plagiarize from any online source and try to write in the British writing style. 
yeah, obviously uh, submitting application to a UK university and is UK selection committee that will be looking at your work. So try to maintain the British writing style. Then I would like also consider the word limits. So if, if, if it's given like 250 words, it's not go beyond that, it's going to put you off completely. Then the last point here, um, that is to say yourself, is you are judged based or your, your assessment is being made based on what you write. So you might have a lot of experiences. If you don't sell yourself, they'll not be able to know that. And in the process of selling yourself, do not exaggerate unnecessarily or lie. It's going to put you off. So if, if, if they, they've already been, been assessing this for years now, and they understand, they understand what is achievable or not. So try to write truthfully, say yourself, but within the confines of truth. Next, please. So we'll be talking about, um, this is the first session of the essay tips. And we'll start with the first um, essay, essay prompt. So the, the question is, how some of it does not look like, do not look like a question though. So uh, this, how your proposed study relates to a development issues at the global, national, local level, B, development issues connected to your chosen CSC team and the wider sector. So first of all, I would like you to know that this scholarship is based on the fact that you are going back to your home country to address a particular issue, a problem that is a developmental problem affecting that community or that nation. So you should know the problem, the general scope of the problem in terms of its global and national, um, spanning through the global and national levels. So what I mean is, you need to identify a particular problem in your home country. It starts with this. I always say this whenever I'm talking about the, the Commonwealth Scholarship. It's about that problem and the solution to that problem. So the first thing you need to un understand is what is the problem you want to solve that is in, that's inherent in your, in your community or in your nation. So if the problem has a global, global application, how is it affecting the world generally? So for example, if you are talking about maybe cancer, so what is the data talking, talking about when it comes to the global scope of cancer? How is it affecting people's life? How is it affecting their quality of life? How is it impacting on mortality, death rate, and all of that? You need to you need to know that, and how is it affecting your country? So in doing this, you need to cite credible bodies. For example, if it's a health-related problem, you should be looking at what the World Health Organization is talking about it. So if it's um, other problem, maybe those based on standard, SON is one of like standard organization of Nigeria and all of that, you need to cite credible sources and what they are saying about the problem in order to drive the verity of that problem home. Secondly, you need to connect yourself, how, how that problem has affected you personally. When I'm talking about personal, it does not mean you must go through that. It means maybe it might be happening in your community, it might have happened to someone related to you. So if that has happened, you need to, to also tell them that, oh, based on this, apart from the fact that this is a problem in my country, this is a problem in the world, how this is how this problem I also affect me, which makes me more passionate about contributing to the solution of the problem. So you need to establish that fact too. Next. So, then you, after talking about that, then you, obviously your country is doing something about the problem. So you, you should talk about what your country is doing about that problem and how those strategies are 
limited. So what is the country doing about it? Obviously, your country is doing something about it. So if it's an agricultural problem, how is the country trying to ameliorate this, this problem? And what gap have you spotted in their approach that has not led to the, 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 the solution of this problem? So you need to talk about that. Next, please. So after talking about that, you now highlight the specific skills and the knowledge which your program is going to, um, to cover that will, that will help you better position you to, to address that particular problem in your home country. It's that simple. So it's more like a deductive approach from the general, talking about the problem globally and how it affects the nation and how it affects you. Then you talking about what the nation has done about it and what gap you spotted and what skills you will get in order to address that problem. Then you conclude by reiterating the urgency of that, of solving that problem. So you can, you can link this up to um, SDGs and as well as the specific team in the given by the CSC, the six CSC teams. It must be addressing at least one of those teams. So you will not make a statement like, okay, this, um, if this problem is not, is not being solved, it's going to impact, it's, all, it's going to limit your country from achieving this so-and-so um, SDGs which the world is actually trying to address. So your country will like be behind. So it also shows connection to the SDGs. Next, please. So the second um, essay requires that, how do you intend to apply your new skill and qualifications when you return home? And this is, is very short, it's like a progression. So first of all, you need to talk about the specific skills you are going to get from the program. So what skill sets? Is it technical skill sets? Is it terms of like research skills? Or what kind of skills um, will the program um, give you or will you acquire from the program? And this, you can actually find this on the university's um, program page. And in writing all of this, not just writing everything you are going to be taught, you don't have a luxury of space and time for that. So you just, you, 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 you pitch your tent around skill set and knowledge that is linked to addressing that problem. Keep the problem in mind throughout because the essence of all this essay is to actually see if you are passionate or you know what, what, what the problem is about and how you are going to address the problem. That's the essence of all of this essay. So keep the problem always in mind when writing. So that's the first thing you need to do. Then secondly, you need to talk about the ways in which you go about like applying this skill. So is it that uh, when you return, and obviously this question is talking about immediately you return. So we are looking at ideally like, like the first day of return from, um, your, from, the, from the UK, what will you be doing? Will you join a particular NGO that you, you'll be, applying that particular skill and the knowledge you've acquired. And it's very important for you to be specific, as I said, you can mention names like, okay, so-and-so NGO, you, you, you come and join them and you work with them in order to achieve this particular problem because you've gotten this skill that is deficient. Do you understand? So stuff like that, then you also need to, need to be specific enough, mention, or is it that you're returning to secure maybe a job in a particular firm, which will help country. And that firm is also getting towards achieving that particular problem, which you mentioned. It's very important. Next slide, please. So the third question is about what you expect will change in development terms following your studies, including A, the outcomes you aim to achieve, B, the time frame for their implementation, and C, who the beneficiaries would be. So here you now talk about, you now write about the objective that you, you aim to achieve. So what do you think you you are you you will achieve within on your return to your home country, which is what you summarize initially. So, like I said, it's like a map. 
the all of the whole of this issue is like a map. Maybe one of the issues talking about it in a in a, in a narrow sense or in a summarized sense, then the other will amplify. So if what what will you achieve? What what's the objective? What's the goal when you return home? How are you going to be applying that? Then secondly, you need you need to break this into specific timelines. For example, you are going to achieve so and so. If for example, if you return and you want to start training people in a particular line based on the skill set and the knowledge you've acquired. So what's the, what's the timeline for that? So if you say, okay, from the first three months, like one to three months, you'll be training so-and-so people. For example, if it's an agricultural problem and you tend to like um, train farmers. So when you come back, how, how is the training going to be in terms of the timeline? The first three months, or will you be doing it biannually, or just once in a year? So you need to mention specifically how those objectives will be met in the confines of time. So then the next you need to highlight the people that will benefit from the program. So if you are if you are trying to um, engage in a particular um, in a particular activity, who is it going to benefit? You need to mention that is it is it a group? Is it a particular set of people? Like is it farmers or are you looking at students or are you looking? So what's what's the 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 the, the who are your beneficiaries? It's very important to mention. Next slide. Then the fourth question is talking about how the impact of your work could be measured. So this is very short. So if, if you are talking about, um, okay, you are going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you need to state the indicators. So how can we measure your impact? How can we measure, you know, when, when you're talking about goals initially, I told you goals need to be smart, you need to be measurable. So that's one feature, like how can we measure it? How can you be you to tell your impact? So. Um, which indicators are you looking at? It could be, okay, the number of people that will be trained. So if there is a deficiency in terms of a particular skill set or technique within your home country, which you are trying to address. So when you are back, how is the numbers going to increase? Is it that there will be increase in the number of people that you will be trained on that? Or if, you are, if it's a research-based problem, will there be an inflow or an increase in terms of the publication within that line. So how can we measure your impact is very important. And in doing this, you need to, to specify like the medium in which you can track your, 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 your impact. For example, it, it could be that okay, specific news agencies are going to take the, the, your work, they are going to broadcast your work, or you are going to partner with them in order to show what you are doing, or is it journal houses? Or so you need to you need to specify how we can measure the impact of your work is very important, and this is very short. So next slide. So we the fifth one is about provide a short outline of your proposed study or research. This should be written for an audience that does not have prior knowledge of the subject and must not be overly technical. Any abbreviation or specialist terms must be explained. Like I said initially, you need to do this throughout your essay. You need to explain words that, that are technical in simple, in simple form so that a layman can understand. So first of all, they're asking for a short outline of your proposed study. So what, what you need to do at this point is to mention the name of your program, okay, you're studying, I'm, that you intend to study masters in public health or masters in this, this in a particular stuff and the university in which you are going to study. So this masters and the university, you need to mention that next. So you now go on to talk about the particular courses, like the key modules, the modules like, when I talk about modules, I mean, that the courses that will be taught within your program. So what are these courses going to address? So 
here you don't need to mention all of the courses you are going to take. You just need to mention the courses that are related to giving you the skill sets or the knowledge in order to address that particular problem which you, you have been talking about. So you need to highlight this. And you can also find this on your school, on the university's um, website, the program page. So you need to talk about that. Then if obviously you are going to write a dissertation, which is like the project, the capstone of your program. So in this place, you just need to highlight. You don't need to go into detailed analysis of the project and what it's going to do. You don't need to say, okay, this, you also have a dissertation component which you'll be trying to work on so and so. So next slide. Then the sixth essay is trying to um, ask for, is provide a detailed plan of your proposed study. The selection panel, we want to understand why you have selected your proposed course and university. Describe clearly, A, why you have chosen your proposed course and university and why you want to undertake this study in the UK. B, why it is you, you are looking, what, what it is you're looking for in a course and how your chosen course relates to your, your objectives. C, any dissertation topic you have in mind. So here you have um, another opportunity to expand on the short outline you gave initially, which is an outline of your proposed study. And in writing this, I, I recommend that you use a deductive method or the deductive approach. In this case, what do I mean? It means writing from the general down to the specific. So if you are starting with why you are writing, why you are applying for the program, or why you are going for this course, you need to start from why you are choosing the, the, the country as a whole, then you go down to why the university, then why the course. So um, if, you are, if you are talking about most times, people try to say, okay, the UK is prestigious, is this and this, apart from that being prestigious, what is the UK doing with respect to that problem? Like I told you, keep the problem in mind. Don't forget the problem whenever you're writing all your essays. So what is the UK doing in terms of addressing that particular problem that interested you in studying the UK at first? We then don't know that you are passionate about that problem. So if the UK have, have, have gained some level of success in addressing that problem, with their novel approach, it, it can be one of the reasons why you are coming to study there. So not just dwelling on rankings alone, that okay, this is right. So you, you can now look at the university in terms of its strength, why you are, you've chosen it. Like there are different reasons for why you are choosing a particular university. Apart from the ranking, don't dwell so much on rankings. So what, what skill set is, um, in that program, in that school, which attracted you at first. Then also you talk, if the university have like an internship component where you go to industry to um, at a point in your study and learn the ways um, those, the skills, the skills you are acquiring from the university have been applied in real life. If it has that, you can also include that because obviously it's going to teach you how you can you can engage with this problem in real time, apart from you studying it. Then the methodologies, how in terms of um, the way it's been, the, the way your program can be run is, is also another way for, for, for choosing the university. So there are different reasons. So you need, to, you need to explain that specific reason or reasons, for example, or why you are choosing a particular university. Then um, you see that you have like specific professors within that field that are doing works that are related to the solution of that problem. So you need to check up this, this school. You need to study this school and you can find all of this information on the school's web website. So you see professors that do maybe related works and why you, you are trying to, uh, and this professor will have like potential to 
be your supervisors, which will help your dissertation. And you also need to talk about your dissertation. And of course, when I'm talking about dissertation, I'm talking about project topic. Yeah, your project, the project you are going to undergo at the end of your program. So you need to talk about this project and the key questions you, are, you try to you're trying to answer with this particular um, dissertation. So you you will now you now be able to show to this the, the selection committee that you've actually researched about the school and what skill set you need and how that will aid you to solve that particular problem. So at this point, let's take a rest so we can continue. All right, thank you. You can just click on the middle. Mr. Stanley, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, you can just click on the middle. You mean what? You can click on the picture. Okay. It's a PDF. It's like a link. I, I mean, but the yeah, is a is a link on your yeah. on your presentation. PDF, yeah, then it may not it may not play. You mean it's a PowerPoint, so it should play. Okay, you yeah, in the PowerPoint, yeah, it should play. But if it's a PDF, no, it won't play. Is, is this not the, the music? Is it not the music you are talking about? Is it yeah. not this? Yeah, so you click on it. That is that is what it that is what it is now. Yeah, probably it's just a technical glitch. Uh that can yeah. be yeah. Yeah. But then I, I think we get the point. There is a, a recess now. And um, how long is it supposed to last? Somewhere. Five minutes. So maybe you can be playing the music. Yeah. Because, because uh, this is the music that appears here. Do you really mean? This music or the another is there another any other one any other thing you wanted me to play? No, just this one. Okay. Or probably you could copy the link both at the bottom if you can share the screen. Yeah, but the link plays this music. Oh, it's obviously not playing here. So okay, no worries. We just have a, a, a break. I'll come back. <laughs> so I, think, I, I, I do think that why is not why is not why is it not playing because you didn't enable the editing on the top screen of the the file is shared to you. So once you, you enable editing mode, then you can be able to play the stuff. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. What why why trying to explain? Okay, I said why the music you are not able to play is, is because the file that you that I sent you that you are you are projecting to us. We, we did not enable the editing mode because I saw it even when you are um, going. Okay, okay, yeah, that's file. true. So once you enable the editing mode, you can able to click on it.
just click on play. Just click on play. Don't... I'll see if you can see Yeah, maybe you should uh, go to presentation mode so that it stops the yeah. highlight. Yeah. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Can you see the link? Yeah, go ahead. The fact is that it is the link that is on the PowerPoint that is playing. Um, okay, not actually the video itself. Yeah, it is the video of the link on the PowerPoint that is playing. Okay. okay. So there is there is no magic you can do to play another link that is not there. I think the break is almost over now. What did you say? I said we can actually wait. The break is almost over. Yeah. The fact is that this music is playing. It's playing in my. Yeah, it's music. playing on. It's playing on my laptop, but and it does good. At least you are the only one enjoying it. Yeah, that's what I like. I'm the only one enjoying this music. <laughs> <laughs> I can play it here, but try to play it out to the. I this think area. I think what happened was you didn't share your windows entirely. Like you were just sharing the the file, which is the PowerPoint. Okay, so yeah, yeah, see, that's you true. Can't see any other thing that is playing outside of the PowerPoint. Oh, yeah, yeah. you know. But, but, but I think but, I think that's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Let me do it this way. Because I yeah, most times I don't like to share my exhausted. <laughs> so I think we could we can as well continue. Yeah, yeah. Uh gentlemen, I I I think um I have to drive somewhere to deliver a message. Meanwhile, Samuel, uh you are much appreciated. Let me give you my vote of thanks for now. And I'm hoping to join over next you guys. When next we're meeting. Samuel, thank you so much. You, you, everything you say has been so insightful. 
uh, many thanks to uh, my friend, myself, for letting me in. And to all of you, I wish you all good luck. My pleasure. Thank and you. All yeah. the best. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. So I think we should continue. If 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 we want to listen to the music, can share that afterwards. So can we enjoy that yeah. later? Maybe so that maybe when the yeah, when they can. get the 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 link, you can continue. I mean the, the PowerPoint link there. Yeah. Yeah. Because here in Nigeria, we don't enjoy uh, free Wi-Fi. You 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 frame it. <laughs> Sally, you are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. so, uh, I understand. To the second part of the the essay tips. So we are on the seventh essay question. Now, <clears throat> describe the skills that you expect to gain from this scholarship and your career plans once you return home afterwards. So this is a two part question which is actually for the seventh and eighth. They just module them together. But what they're asking specifically here is the objectives during your award. So it implies that what will you be doing? What do you aim to achieve while you are studying? You know, you are coming here to study. It does not mean you are going to be doing only academic things. So which other plans do you have? And the smartest way you can go about this is also trying to talk about write about things that we also facilitate your achievement or the solution to that problem. Like I always say, keep the problem in mind. Even if you are talking about something that looks abstract, you need to keep the problem in mind to explain around. So for example, you are talking about what you'll be doing here. So you can say you want to um, engage in like research collaborations, like um, for example, maybe you have a particular institute within the UK and within that um, city you live, in, even if it's not the same city, they are doing something related to that. Let's say, for example, you have an agricultural problem and you see like an agricultural institute within that city or within the UK. You can write that obviously that you would want to like go and know about how that is being done and to be able to get underst more understanding of real life application or solution of that problem. And you can also talk about how you collaborate with lecturers or faculty <laughs> members yeah, to, to, do, to, to, to do a particular research or that you'll be needing when you return home more like collaboration with the professors. So you can talk about different, different um, things and different ideas. You can be okay, you want to engage in being, for example, the this, this student union um, president, or maybe you want to set up a particular um, small group study within that particular school. And you, the, the study will be based on that problem you want to address. So you can get the, the input of different people from different communities to, to be able to better position you to solve that particular problem. So you see there are different ideas. Or you can, okay, if you have a particular skill set and that is required, for example, you have a, a coding um, skills or you have a, an IT skill that you can use to create a platform, you bring different people together in order to discuss that developmental problem or something like that. So you just need to be creative about what you'll be doing within your study period. And you can combine that with academics, obviously, not an unrealistic plan that you can't combine with academics. So you need to talk about that. Then always link the goal, like I said, to the consigned problem then you describe how you are going to achieve these particular goals. Not just saying you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this. How are you going to achieve that plan that you have when studying? So if it's collaboration, how are you going to start the collaboration? Which people will facilitate that collaboration at the end of the day? So you need to talk right about that. Next, please. So the eighth 
essays on career plans in five years following the award. So what this is trying to say is, what are you going to be doing five years after you graduate? So initially you've talked about the short term plan, which is like a year. So now they want to know how you are going to progress this further in, in five years. So you need to, at this point, you need to, next slide, you need to talk about um, the objective that you have. And it's very important to keep this objective within the confines of your home country. So you can't say you are passionate about solving a particular problem or contributing to the solution of a particular problem in your home country. And five years after graduation, you are already saying you'll be in the UK or you'll be in the US or you've been in the world, it's not realistic. It doesn't show you are passionate about it. So try to limit this plan and try to limit it within your home country. So what will you be doing? Is it that when within this five phase, you take up maybe um, an academic position in a particular school and where you'll be giving, you'll be teaching young uh, minds, young, young enthusiasts about these skills and these techniques you've learned so that you grow, grow a community of young people that will quickly address this, this the problem in which you are trying to solve. Or is it that within these five years, you will start up a non-governmental organization like a, an NGO. And it's important you also specifically mention the name. For example, you are starting an, an NGO. Don't just say you want to start an NGO. What's that NGO? What's the name of the NGO you are proposing? And what's, what will the NGO be doing within those five phases? So you need to talk all about it and try to keep community mindedness in all you are doing. How is it going to benefit people? How is it going to benefit people? Not about you. How is it going to benefit the community? How is it going to benefit your nation as a whole? And if it has a global coverage, how is it going to affect the world. So you need to be specific about this. Then ensure they are also smart. They are specific, they are measurable, they are achievable, they are relevant to the problem and they have specific timelines. So you can say the first year you'll be doing this, the second year and all of that, you need to specify so you don't make generic statements. Next slide. So the ninth one is all about the long-term career plans. This, this is very important because you are not going beyond the short term and the medium term. You are going now to like in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years, and even in 30 years from now, what will you be doing, your, your long-term career uh, plans? So in this, in this point, I, I, I advise you have as ambitious as possible. Be very ambitious because they will obviously want to find someone that is really ambitious. So they will be proud of later to say, oh, this was a scholar. This is an alumni from um, the Commonwealth Scholarship. So they will be able to, to be happy that they made an investment on such individuals. So they want to know how ambitious you are. Talk about big projects. Do not, at this point, you don't need to be limited to your home country alone. You can talk about uh, things you'll be doing that's within your home country and that also affects the nation, your country, and that affects your continent. For example, if it's Africa, you're talking about how is it going to affect Africa generally and even globally. So you need to think like, think really big. So will you be heading like um, organizations, for example? And apart from you talk, talking about the, the ambitious goals you have, you need to explain how you are going to arrive at that. Not just say, okay, you want to be the president of this? You want, how is it going to be possible? Is it that, okay, from you'll be doing specific projects or within this particular field? And that will like announce you and make you like relevant or considerable for a particular position, which you are vying for in the long term. So how are you going to achieve, what's the roadmap in achieving that ambitious plan that you have? 
you need to state them and they must be they must be smart obviously they, they are specific measurable they are achievable and they are relevant and as well they are time bound so give specific timeline to achieving the long term goals then i would like you also understand that we should think outside the box thinking outside the box um for for instance you mustn't limit yourself to academic because your program maybe you, you are doing academics, you feel that okay, um, your long term goal must be a professor. It's not it's not so. You might you might try to write, okay, you, you want to be you want you want to go into politics, even if you have you have a background in academia, in the sense that you you go into politics to 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 bring out policies that we aid the achievement or the the that will aid the solution of that problem from the standpoint of you engaging in politics. So maybe you'll be representing a particular set of people and you'll be making policies that will directly or positively impact their lives. So you can also talk about that. So you don't, you don't need to box yourself up within the particular field that you've studied that, oh, I am into in education. It means my long-term goal must be, must be that I'll be a professor. So, I need to think outside the box too. It's very important. Then the tenth essay is on personal statements. So um, the personal statements asking you is kind of different a bit from the normal personal statement that we know. Here they specify that to summarize the ways in which your personal background has encouraged you to want to make an impact in the home country which indicate areas in which you have already contributed, such as having overcome any personal or community barriers to higher education. So this, this has the very, I think the longest, um, has the longest word, the, the, the highest word count so that you can express yourself. So for me, I suggest you also use the STAR approach that we mentioned earlier. Staff was explaining in order to explain experiences or engagement, it's good to use that approach where you talk about the background of um, the situation. Then you talk about like the tax, what you need to, what needed to be achieved, the goals. Then you talk about what you did and the results. So you need to use this approach throughout. Then you start by bringing up a captivating and motivating story of your personal background. For example, if you've had, if you have been affected by that problem personally, you need to, you need to draw the attention of the selection community to the fact that you've undergone this problem and the problem can take different, different forms. So you, you need to start that statement very, it's very important to captivate them. Then you now, next slide. So you now go on to talk about your academic or your professional background for like this, the course you studied. Then in, in trying to do this, you need to, next slide, you need to go on to talk about the, the, the challenges that you experienced. So um, what challenges did you face when you were studying during your undergrad? It can be financial, it can be, it can be, it can be, it can be like different challenges you faced. Then they want to know at this point whether you can actually face this particular situation and come up with ideas in order to ameliorate or ameliorate that particular condition. So if you've gone to like um, financial challenges during your program, how were you able to, to manage it? You need to talk about that. Was it that okay? You you went because you have, for example, financial challenge, trying to meet up with your studies. You now took off a part-time job to to gain to like help your parents in order to contribute to your studies. Or did you go on to like learn maybe a particular skill skill that helped you to generate money to to help to ameliorate the problem, the, ch the challenges you are facing. So you need to talk about like the challenges, how you address them. If
you maybe you face health problem with to overcome it within like you shall to make impact in the future that's what it means so you need to talk all about all of this then you can just highlight some community project that you did even within your undergraduate, you need to highlight those uh, those community projects. Then, at the end of the day, you you write. You also reiterate. It's very important to keep them, keep all your ACs focused on the problem. Don't deviate from them. So you now reiterate the the the, part, the need for you to like address this particular problem which you've you you've you've gone through. So, or which has affected your community and why this program is, will be important in the final, um, the final paragraph or final, the concluding sentence for this personal statement. You need to, you need to explain all of that. Next slide. So we'll be looking at the 11th essay, um, talking about voluntary and leadership experience. To summarize the ways in which you have engaged in voluntary activities and the opportunities you have had to demonstrate leadership. So um, in trying to explain this also, I, I like us to understand the fact that you need to adopt the star approach in explaining experiences and engagements. You already know like the situation on the ground, the, the tax, the action, and the results. You need to ex use this throughout in explaining each of the experiences that you've had, whether they are voluntary or, or leadership. Next, please. So you need to like talk about the leadership experience you have and the voluntary experience, like how you've gone beyond. Um, the voluntary experience does not mean, necessarily mean you, you have an NGO, because some of the times we neglect very little things that We've done, we trivialize them. So it mustn't be that you you set up an NGO. So you you might you might have been in a particular team and um, there was a need for something, and you came out wi willingly and you you suggested maybe an idea, you suggested something, or you provide a solution to a particular problem within that context, within the context of the team. So that's also. The kind of leadership and a volunteering experience, especially if you are not paid for that. Yeah. So you, you need to talk about all of these experiences. So if you don't, I, I advise like you, you get more recent experiences, for example, maybe during undergraduate, when you were studying, maybe when you were doing research on the grad, or if maybe you took up a particular position and in your your student government or maybe department or department you to all about this. Then in explaining your volunteer and leadership experiences, I would like you to know that it's needed to quantify as much as possible. So if for example you 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 developed maybe you you had an NGO for example and they were trying to address a particular problem. So what was the reach of that NGO at the end of uh, your engagement? How many people benefited from that? Is it that you organized maybe um, a training workshop and you had 100 people or 50 people or 40 people? You need, to, you need to quantify as much as possible the effect of your action, the effect of your engagement, whether they are voluntary or they are in, in the context of leadership. And another point I want us to understand is that leadership does not necessarily mean that you occupy a leadership position. So because if they say leadership position, leadership experience, you'll be thinking, oh, I've never been a president. I've never been a secretary. I've never been a, a treasurer. I've not, I've not done things like that. You, you don't need to limit yourself to that. So it's not about the position. If you have the position, that's fine. You can, you can explain what you achieved um, based on that office, but not necessarily 
that you occupy a particular position for you to, 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 to have done or to have had leadership experiences. You can even go as far back, some people go as far back as their secondary school to explain a particular thing that they did if they don't have more recent ones. But I encourage you to use more recent. They want to know how, how you've been faring recently, not just maybe 10 years ago. So then you need to mention specific organization or the groups as well as the beneficiaries, which I've said initially. So if you've had like maybe leadership experience or maybe you volunteered, which organization did you volunteer with? You need to mention their name, what you've done and how your actions have resulted in different outcomes. You need to, you need to talk about that. Next slide. So here I'll need, I'll need to, to advise you, like do not hide on that thing. So if you are talking about leadership, don't go and be writing we, we, we. It's not about we. What they want to know is, okay, you, you, you have leadership experience because obviously there's a thing. So what is your own contribution to that team? It's not what the team achieved, it's what you achieved in that team. So what have you done or what was your contribution to that team that enabled them to achieve a particular result? So those are the things you'll be talking about and not the we. So it's more of the I. I did this in the, in the, in the circumference of this team. And this was what my action resulted into. So that's what you need to say. Then finally on this, I would like you to know that don't realize any experience. Don't. As little as, little as it is, like maybe, for example, maybe in doing your research on the grad, you had particular issues, maybe with analyzing a particular data when you were on your know, undergrad. Then you now came up with Maybe software, you, you, you went on research and you saw that you could use a particular software to analyze that data. That is something. You don't necessarily need to be the president of an institution or association for you to have a, had like leadership experience of volume. So look at even very trivial experiences, that's if you don't have a lot, and try to write within the circumference of these experiences that you've had and just let your contribution shine. Sell yourself properly and you'll be fine. At this point, I want to thank the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission, which is the part of the UK Foreign Commonwealth Development Office for granting me the opportunity to become a Commonwealth Scholar and whose website I used to uh, come up with a part of this presentation detailing the, the, the requirements, the eligibility and selection criteria. And I also give credence to Victor Agboga, Anero Narko Philip. They're very wonderful scholars that had like great deal of experience, which are also tapped from their wealth of experience. Then the take home message is that a Commonwealth Share Scholarship is a developmental scholarship. Don't forget that. It's a developmental scholarship. So you need to address all your essays such that they are getting towards a, solving a particular problem. It's just one problem. You cannot solve a lot of problems. So it's just a particular developmental problem in your home country, which you are trying to solve. Secondly, I would like you to know that you need to submit strong applications to so not just the scholarship. Don't forget that in applying, you need to apply, you need to, you need to craft your SOP and your CV and all of that to make you a strong candidate. Don't look at the fact that it's easier for you to get because from experience and from the experience of others, I know it's easier to get admission in the UK. You know that like it's easier to get admission in the UK than um, other um, countries like the US. So don't just bank on that and submit um, a, a, an SOP that, that's not strong enough. You might end up getting admission, but it might not stand the test of time when they are judging your application for the Commonwealth Scholarship. So don't forget that. 
then you, know, you, know, you need to also check the, the university for additional requirement, like the university I got into. I think it happened with one applicant last year and I felt really bad for her. I told her to check, but it seems she forgot. The university I, I, like, I got uh, the scholarship to had a specific deadline to Commonwealth scholars to apply for admission. So if you meet, and the deadline is always the same with the deadline of the scholarship. So if you miss that, it means you are automatically disqualified. And in also writing, they ask for uh, like a 500 word is separately for why you are applying for the scholarship. So you see, you need to check both the university and the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission. You need to check for both of them to see if there's any extra requirement you need to meet as an applicant so you don't miss out on things. Then finally, I want you to conduct like your thorough research, research about the problem, research about it, have data to prove your point from the standpoint of the community, the, your country, and the world in general. So when you write, you give enough evidence, you, you evidence your findings, and the quality of your obviously is very important. Like I said initially, you are judged based on what you write. You are not conducting interview for most of the schools, so you are judged based on what you write. At this point, I want to thank Eduard Fick Scholars for the opportunity to be here. And I want to thank you for listening to my long narrative. And at this point, I want to ask if there's any question so we can proceed. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, I told you guys, Samuel is a perfect gentleman. In fact, uh, his gentility is, is a, a serious thing for me. I can't be that gentle. I'm a very rugged guy. Yeah, but when it comes to gentility, there are some people you give credence to. Um, I love uh, his dog so much. He has really struck a balance. As a matter of fact, you know, when he was saying some of these things, I, it, my mind was going back to those days that uh, I submitted application for this uh, Commonwealth Scholarship. And from what he's saying, I was able to know where I made mistakes in my first, you see, I, I think I applied for, school, for this scholarship like two times. The first one was uh, the Nigerian, the one that Nigeria will nominate you and all that. That one, I didn't even, Nigeria didn't even tell me whether they nominated me or not. So that one was uh, a serious thing. But then the second one was a uh, common one shared, which uh, I applied and, you know, I took I took steps. I looked at the previous one that I applied. I now upscaled a little bit, and that was when I met uh, uh, Samuel online on LinkedIn. And then he made some corrections, which I tried to impute there. And then from what he's saying now, I saw that even some of those things that I do, I did there, I needed to do more. So I think, uh, like I always say, that knowledge is transient. Knowledge is trans transient in the sense that as time goes on, new things come up and you learn from people, you learn from other people. So I think uh, I've really learned a lot from here. So, but before, I think there are some questions, but before we take some questions, um, I don't know if June is still on the call, I would like to bring him on board, uh, maybe to share one or two experiences uh, based on uh, his own uh, experience, based on uh, um, applications. And, uh, you know, like I told you guys, today's uh, program is uh, is a part two, or a build up of last week's one. Because statement of people, personal statement, all these things are the major part of your, there is no application you make in this life without writing an SOP. But there are some applications you make without writing the research proposal. There are some applications you write without make, writing um, research proposals. There are some applications you write without, you know, probably writing GRE and all that, or even writing email to professors. But there is no application you, you do without an SOP. So that's why we stress much on SOP. And as you can see, it's it still revolves around all we said last week. So 
about star approach and the uh, smart smart approach so i don't know june can you come up and uh, share your uh, the little experience you have with the audience sure stanley thank you so much and also thank you to uh, Samuel, for the wonderful presentation, I I must echo uh, your because words. Your Stanley, video is also, not on. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. I must echo Stanley's words. I also learned a significant amount uh, based on the presentation, and I hope uh, if permission could be granted to share the PPT. I would love to review it even after the session. So uh, thank you so much for that. Yeah, I will share that with you. So I'm going to share my screen. Just give me one moment. And is it all okay. right if I um, close the video just so that the system resources on my internet connection are a little bit lower? Okay, no problem, you can go ahead. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, I think I can see All it right. from here. Yeah, I can see it too. All right, perfect. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, the UK Statement of Purpose, a motivation letter, as opposed to the uh, presentation which preceded this by Samuel. Um, my presentation is going to be focused more on a general university application. Um, it's not focused on a specific uh, national level scholarship, such as the Commonwealth Scholarship. Um, it's more of a case um, looking at each university's uh, scholarships that they have for students applying to that specific institution. Um, and a little bit more context about the highlights from the letter that I will be discussing. Um, this was a letter that I drafted for a bachelor's degree. Uh, so again, it's very different to a graduate level of studies. Um, specifically, there was very, very little in terms of academic accomplishments, papers, um, research projects, um, collaborations uh, in the field, um, apart from, for example, what one would tend to do in high school, uh, perhaps your recommendations from your high school teachers, projects that you've undertaken in high school, and then perhaps uh, work experience that you've also accumulated up until that point. Um, this letter assisted me in securing a scholarship at LSE, um, which is a university in the UK. And it was also proofread by the principal of a British school um, with whom I had exchanged emails. And in fact, uh, very similar to I think how many of us are networking prior to us submitting our applications, we reach out to someone in, in a polite and a positive way. And oftentimes this can get us quite far. Someone may respond to you and, and offer to proofread your letter. Uh, they may offer you advice. And I certainly recommend that you do this because it opens up many more doors than one would expect. Um, the letter that I drafted was very brief. It was about one page in total, including the header and, and the sign off. And the process of compiling this letter from the draft until the submission lasted approximately two months. Um, so there was a bit of, I like to call it ping pong, like table tennis going, going on between myself and also you know people that were reviewing the letter and giving me advice. And so it did take about two months. And then just to jump into some of the content from the letter, in the introduction to the letter, um, I actually opened with a quote. Uh, so it was this specific quote right here. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And this is a quote by Nelson Mandela. And um, at this time, at the time where I wrote this letter, bachelor degree level studies, um, I found this quote to be quite compelling because it was from a figure from South Africa and it was also the type of quote that could be used to establish rapport. Um, and rapport is quite important because the 
review committees and uh, the adjudicators that are viewing these applications and reviewing them, um, they tend to have a very high workload. And you want to try to create some degree of rapport with them simply because by doing so, they tend to remember your motivation letter, your statement of purpose, um, and also your application. Um, so I think rapport is very, very important. Um, listening to Samuel's presentation, what also struck me was that if we think about it in terms of trust, there are at least three components that feed into trust. Uh, there's competence, there's credibility, um, which is very, very much touched on by Samuel. Thank you, having a network issue. Hi, June. Can you check your network from your end? I think we lost him, uh, maybe due to poor yeah. connection. So it's best we uh, we move on. And anytime he comes online, we could. Uh... Okay. All right. So uh, that is a network for you, and uh, that shows that shows you that even in the foreign land, we still have network issues. So it's not only in Nigeria. So when people say Nigeria, Nigeria, it's a general issue everywhere. <laughs> So uh, our own guy, our own guy Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But at least uh, you can see it. So um, what we be doing? I think, in fact, he was giving a very wonderful I presentation. Uh, if Ajumi Network did not knock him out, I would have loved to listen to this because what he's saying is very important. But in any case, uh, we hope to have him back. When we have him back. Then uh, yeah, we can continue from there. Uh, I don't know. So, um, okay, can we be meeting is being recorded? Yes, we'll be taking questions. We'll be taking okay. questions okay. now. While we are taking, while we wait for him, we'll be taking questions from you guys. Um, let me check the chat box. I don't know if there are questions here. Um, if there is no one yeah, here, maybe I have one to ask anyway. Okay, ask. Okay. Um, Samuel is um, Samuel will be here to answer you. Okay. So um Samuel, um thank you for your extensive um lecture so far. And um there is no time for a vote of thanks, but let me just quickly go to my question. You know, you talked about the application the admission application. And um, from what, from the review or from what you said, it seems that um, this this application, I mean, from your today's lecture, this application are majorly done when you have secured admission in school. I, I might be right or wrong, but I just want you to clarify it. Maybe I have gotten admission in a particular school, then I am now applying for the Commonwealth um, uh, scholarship so that they can now fund my admission or uh, or is it that before you get the admission you will now apply for scholarship first or do they work simultaneously i don't know if you understand um yeah, my I, get question. The, I get the question you're trying to ask okay there's no hard and fast truth to that it depends on the school basically so but you you can apply concurrently. I think that's the safest. Um, like like what I did, I applied for admission and the scholarship at the same time, such that I did not pass the deadline for both admission and for the scholarship. Because some school, like the school that funded me, the school asked to submit the same time with the Commonwealth application. So as the Commonwealth application is closing, you can no longer submit for admission. 
you cannot okay, longer wait, submit if I... application for admission. But if you have like maybe some people like have gotten admission previously, you can defy it. So maybe you had admission to start um, maybe this year, September, and you want to apply for the Commonwealth Scholarship, which normally comes out November, December, most times. So you want to apply for it for next year. It means you are going to defer the admission you've had this time to next year. So that's, does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does make sense. Because what I'm asking is that um, I, I, I was actually applying for admission um, recently. I think that was last week. So the school now, the, I, I got to a stage where they asked me if the my school funding is personal, is, is, is coming from me or is coming from a set of organization. And I said, yeah, it's coming from a set of organization. And then I asked me to provide um, the evidence or, or maybe letter that's covering the the funding which which at that process i have to pause one is because i have not secured the 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 funding itself and secondly yeah on the school part i have not actually like i'm not sure if the admission is going to go through so i didn't have the evidence to to submit to them i don't even understand what i'm saying okay i understand the background now like I think yeah, what so what year are you applying for? Is it for this September? No, it's what? it's for um, January. January. It's for January. Um, that, yeah. If you apply for January, it I don't think it, it doesn't cover the Commonwealth Scholarship because I know Commonwealth Scholarship. Um, if you want to apply, maybe for January, you should have had maybe the previous year's scholarship for the common world. So you always apply a year ahead. So okay. if you're looking at January, they should have already given um, the scholarship for like the people that are supposed to start September now or January next year. It's, it should have been done last year. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. So if you're applying for January, then it should be January 2025. Okay, you, you mean if I'm applying for you mean if I'm applying for the scholarship or if I'm applying for school itself? Yeah, I mean like the admission. If you're applying for admission, yeah, it should it should not okay. be next this admission because they've already awarded. Uh, I think they 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 should have started contacting um, successful scholars from last year, so that should cover for oh, okay. people starting September or maybe if your program is starting in January oh, okay. next year. And one thing I need you to understand also is that it's a partnership scholarship. So you don't just apply for any program you like. It, you apply for programs that are on the Commonwealth Scholarship um, page, which the school is willing to fund. Because it's the school that does the nomination, then the scholarship, the, the Commonwealth accepts it and fund part of it. Do you understand? Fund your tuition. Okay. So it, it's an agreement. For you to apply next year, as at, that should have been done last year. Except you are looking at 2025, maybe January, or maybe you are looking at 2024, September. And then the, the CSC would have brought out a list of programs they are going to fund this November that we are going to. Do you understand how it works? So it's always a year ahead. Yeah, okay, so I think. Um... I think June is uh, back on stage. So well, I think there are some questions we will look at. Uh, there's a very important question uh, we will look at, but let me get June back to back to stage so that he can complete. Because what I wanted us to do is after his talk, we can the whole questions, both the questions for him and questions for uh, the speaker, which is Samuel, you come. So, um, June, can you start uh, sharing your screen again and uh, maybe uh, rush down? Yeah, you have the floor. You can unmute yourself. Um, I think it's okay, let me share my screen.
Okay, okay, okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. All right, I cut out previously, but could anyone tell me where it cut out? I think you cut out in the previous um, slide before this one. Yes, I think okay. this is where so you were talking you. about the introduction. Yeah, you have uh, finished talking about uh, the goods and uh, every. Uh, I think you're almost done with this particular slide before you get cut off. Okay, let me continue then with the body. I appreciate you letting me know where we were, Stanley. Yeah. Okay, so in the body, I talked a little bit about um, some uh, important information about why I was applying for this program, uh, specifically to scaffold some small business, which I had started in the e-commerce space. I'm sure that many of us are familiar with websites such as uh, eBay. And uh, I think it's very important for most of these scholarships that are focused on bachelor degree studies to answer the why as directly as possible. Because for many of these programs, it may not be the case that they are very specific. They're often quite broad and quite general. And so you want to make it quite clear very early on why it is you have chosen uh, this program. Um, at the same time, I think it's very important to be honest. Uh, there's no harm in sharing vulnerabilities. As long as you've sort of figured out how you're going to mitigate these in future, and what they're going to be looking at establishing is whether you have a coherent path to addressing and overcoming these shortcomings. Um, and I think it's also very important at this stage to showcase your ambition, to show how the studies that you're going to be embarking on will support these solutions um, in your career and in your academic life more generally. Um, and then finally, the conclusion of uh, the letter that I drafted, um, it, it summarized this idea that education has a very important place um, in, and hold it in very high esteem. Um, and then at the same time, I ended with a quote by uh, Mohandas Gandhi, which is that you should live as if you were to die tomorrow, uh, but to learn as if you were to live forever. And I think you want to finish on a strong note and to bring your message together neat, neatly. Um, and perhaps ending with another quote or a summary of the more important points in your letter uh, is the best way to do this. Um, and sometimes you could do both. It's really up to your preference. Um, there is no one correct way uh, to structure these types of letters. I think the best way that you would want to approach it is to see what works for you and try not to come across as too try hard. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions or feedback and uh, thank you so much uh, for your attention today. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, June. Um, that is a very uh, apt um, addendum to what we are doing today. It's like I said, it's a build up of what we did last week and it's a build up of all we've been saying because uh, uh, this is like uh, uh, what we did in the second week. I mean, third week. Our third week, we talked about uh, writing email to the professors you wish to to work under when you uh, when you are when you are given the opportunity to uh, come and study. So you have really uh, given a kind of a summary of what Linda said on the third week of this program, and uh, it's a very nice uh, thing. So if you have any question. Regarding this, you can see bring it up. Why we are waiting for physical or direct questions? Um, let me look at the. I think. Okay, somebody said uh, she's in somewhere. Somebody said she's in. Yes, this issue now. Somebody said she's in a reserved list uh, up till now. Do you think? Do you have any idea if uh, she say has? I mean, because. Commonwealth have not reached back to her. Okay. Up to now. And uh, she's in reserve list. And uh, I don't know whether they have announced for the current people to September intakes. Okay, here's the thing. Like if you are in reserve list, you just need to be hopeful and to pray. Okay. Yeah, it's very important. Like this thing happened to my friend. In fact, he wasn't on reserve list. He was sent 
the breakfast message as usual. So yeah. they now it they now called him when someone, some group of people rejected the offer. And I think I, I said they were adding more people. They wanted to add more scholars. So they now sent him a message of nomination, someone that had been rejected. And that happened, mm-hmm. I think, in August. It was in August. Yeah, our program is to start in October. It was in August it happened. So I want her to like be hopeful and still wait. Anything can happen anytime. They can still send a um, message. So that's what I have for her. There's really no timers, except when the program has started, you know that, okay, all is gone. But for now, I just I just hope you scale through. Yeah, just there is thinking. still hope. There is still hope for her. Uh, the only thing, because uh, I think uh, the only challenge she's having is uh, the university that that she's uh, that she got admission to told her to reply uh, with the unconditional whatever by July 31st. So and in a situation whereby you you have a deadline from your university to make the first pay, uh, deposit, what they call initial deposit. Yeah. Uh, what do you do about it? When okay, I think Commonwealth have not Commonwealth uh, is still keeping you unreserved and they have not informed you of whether you have been taken or not, but you are on the reserve list. And then the I university is- I see informed the university. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's all. What, what would I, the person do? I think it's important for her to inform the university about that because um, the university work, they, they work hand in hand. They also work with, is the university that does the nomination. Like if we, if um, realistically, is the university that selects the candidate and suggests to the Commonwealth. So if she's still on reserve list, she's still on positive standing with the university, but they have not, uh, they are not sure if anyone is going to go out of that for her to come in or so. So she should inform them that she's on like reserve list and still waiting for the outcome. So they can like extend the deadline, the deadline. for her. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, is uh, good luck was raising his hands. I saw his hands earlier. Good luck. Oh. Good luck. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, good evening. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning to everyone. Uh, special appreciation to Samuel and to other colleagues here, um, like June and. Uh, of course, I recognize um, Obi's uh, presence and uh, as well as any other scholar who I might uh, forget to mention. Uh, regarding the question of uh, CSS, um, of course, uh, someone has given you a good feedback. And of course, I can only share my experience based on uh, what's also happened in my case. Uh, I know the final notifications come in, come in July. And the reason why um, common word does that way is to make sure they exhaust all possibilities of actually adding someone. But then also hearing uh, some of uh, contribution that it could also go beyond July to August. I think that is also insightful because in my case, although I have a scholarship already, they, they waited, they pended it till I think sometime mid of July that I got the notification that, okay, they've exhausted all their possibilities and no one could, uh, they couldn't really proceed with it because no one was, um, no, no more spaces to really um, adapt. But in her peculiar situation, if the school requests for, um, for something like the first, the first deposit, which is usually expected that the deadline should be paid before you resume studies in August or September, which is the fall semester, I think what you can do is to um, just write them a very good email stating your present situation. And, um, but then again, this would be nice to also do proactively just so that they could also look into your case. And um, I would say that this, this could really be the right thing to do as early as possible. If you think um, your case may have been forgotten or you feel like you're prejudiced to like pay deposits, then it's best you just um, write to them seamlessly and say, this is your situation. But normally they know your situation because you have to like fill in the school to nominate you for the scholarship. So sometimes they know and they just want to check up. But I think it's good advice for you to uh, 
write them proactively if you feel pressured about the deposits and um, just see, see, see how it goes really. So this would be my um, this would be my recommendation to write to them if they're giving you a deadline, only if there is a case for a deadline. But again, another thing you could consider is to ask them politely about your situation with the scholarship as you would like to um, really be on board to join them this fall and you express a desire to really say that this means a lot to you to actually resume with them. So this could be a way to um, ask them pleadingly so that um, perhaps they could also reach out to the Commonwealth uh, Office for some special um, considerations. So um, this could be one way to really look at it. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, so I really want to encourage you guys um, to apply for this scholarship very soon. I think by September now they will announce the opening for this application. One reason you should apply for this scholarship is not even, not one of the reasons you should apply for this scholarship is that it's gonna be an eye opener for you. It's gonna help you so much to learn how to apply. If you, if you look at, if you had followed somewhere from beginning to the end, you will find out that this scholarship culminates as in it is a, it is, it is an, um, it is a whole gamut of all we've been saying when it comes to research proposal, when it comes to statement of papers, personal statement. So it's it's so encompassing. So, for instance, this scholarship. Let me tell you guys. The, let me confess now. This Commonwealth scholarship because we, me and the good luck, we we were applying for this scholarship when we were in Nigeria. It is something that opened our eyes to establish this Edua Free Scholars. I tell you something, because when we were applying for this scholarship, you see, I was telling uh, Commonwealth, okay, you would not take me, but eventually those things that I wrote, one of the things I wrote that I'm gonna do when I get opportunity to travel abroad is to have something like this. And my focus was on SDG4, which is uh, uh, quality education. So, and when I now saw myself in US, I said, those things that I told these people that I want to do, that they should give me the scholarship so that I will do. They refuse to give me the scholarship. <laughs> I will not do it even while I'm in, I'm in the US. So, so even if you are planning to come to the US or any other country, please try to apply for this scholarship to have the experience because it is going to make you to think. When I was applying for one thing that, made me, one thing that I learned when I was applying for this scholarship is that I had to think and think and think beyond. Just like you are, we are talking about the specifics, the measurable, the issue of uh, 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 time bound and all that. It made me to think beyond the level of saying something generic. I'm going to, 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 to pull down uh, Nigeria and build it again. You know, all those things are generic thing, but focus, as you can see, if you look at what Edu Africa is doing, we are focused on a particular group of people. And we are focused on quality education and we are focused on people whom we, we are focused on building a community of scholars who would in the next five to 10 years contribute to both their host country and their home country. So you see, we are not talking about, we want to uh, 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 do, bring the whole of uh, uh, world to US or something, you know? We are just being specific. And that was because of the experiences we had when we applied for this scholarship. So I encourage you guys, apply for it. It is very, very competitive. It is very, very competitive. And that is why you, it will make you to think and think and think deeply for you to, because if you look at this whole thing now, you have like 200 words and you look at uh, the explanations that you. Samuel has given, you find out that Samuel has uh, a lot of things in one particular question. So putting all these things together and not talking a lot of, because why, why trying to put all these things together? If you, are, if you don't think well, you might start talking something else. So still focusing on the problem, like, he, like well, there was a time he said, focus on the problem that you started with. So connecting all the aces, the 11 aces, connecting all of them to the 
problem you identify from the person one is a very wonderful skill you need to learn. And you can only learn that skill from common words. I must confess, it is the strength. I use the strength that I use to apply for common words to apply for universities in the US. And that is why, that is one of the reasons and that's one of the things that helped me to get to US. So just like what people used to say, uh, oh. There was something I remember when Samuel was, well, one funny thing I remember when, when Samuel was uh, uh, talking. There was a time in Nigeria, one, uh, one uh, Nigerian uh, student that graduated, she said, uh, massive, my ma ma massive my practice brought me to this level. So I now want to convert that to Nigeria. So massive applications, massive prop, uh, scholarship applications brought me to US. So apply massively. Continue to submit up to 50, 80, 100, as many. The only thing it will take is your MB. Most of the universities in UK doesn't even require application uh, fee. So just apply as many as, to, as many as you can now now learn. Please, this good luck. I have been this good luck guy or God or George Chris. I have been meeting you since we started this program. If I meet you, you will unmute yourself. If I meet you, you will unmute yourself. I don't know why. All right, so Ebuka was raising his hands. I don't know if he has his question has been answered from all we've said. If it has not been answered, can you ask your question? Otherwise, um, um, I think we have almost exhausted. Ebuka, are you there? Yeah. Yes. All OK. Right. Um, I greet each and every one of you, Mr. Stanley, Mr. Samuel, every scholar here. I want to thank each and every one of you. Please, uh, my this is coming in there from two phases. One is this, please, I don't know, it's, it's going to be a, a kind of an appeal. Because most of the times, from the, I think from the initial day, apart from the day Mr. Stan spoke, I think every other person is coming from the background of science. We that are in the management field, we, it seems, yes, sometimes some things may be applicable to the management side. But most of the times, like me and I'm personal, to generate some problems that I can be able to link to my personal uh, background. And uh, because of the way, uh, can I say, because of the way that Nigeria is, sometimes we tend to get ourselves, maybe when we must have even finished university, that we have made some certain mistakes. Now, how do we generate these ideas? How do we generate these problems? Link it to where we are. Now, apart from taking up courses that we prepare us, let me, let me take from an example. I am watching a, a MSc in finance. I am doing a finance related job, but now, based on previous job, and how uh, I can be able to generate finance related contemporary issues and have you charged it be what it may be giving you may not be an option in a particular school. So how to generate these ideas, if it's possible to still uh, hammer on it, and then if it's still possible as a humble appeal, to also bring someone from the field of management to also tell, uh, give us their experience so that as we are learning from science, we're also learning from management. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, is it? Is it um, we are going to answer this question now? Okay, good luck. He's raising his hands. Uh, I, I want to quickly um, respond to the question. Um, like, if you looked at my presentation, maybe you just forgot uh, very quickly. I took uh, a two year approach. And what I did was to give you a dimension of how this. Uh, sorry, I think. Sorry, could you, I can at least. And I gave you two dimensions of how to approach an expo. And I did that uh, because I believe that we, are, uh, we have very uh, many disciplines and all of them would not be in sciences. And just to just like refresh or do a quick reminder of what I pointed out, you said the management or your social sciences or your in the arts background. I, I, I made it very clear that uh, if you want to write, this can be me I don't know why people, people just, in a, just continue. I've muted the person. Okay, so I, I made it, uh, I tried to make it clear. Maybe I didn't make it clear enough that the best way, if you're in the management sciences, the best way to approach your SOP 
is not to just look at something generic. Something generic doesn't solve a problem. The best way is first, all of us, we wrote thesis. So you could go back to your thesis and build on your thesis if you did an undergrad. Then again, what you could do is, I mean, if you are going to apply to a school, you need to do your homework. Find out what they are doing in that school in terms of management, right? So look at their curriculum. If you notice this is their curriculum, then align it with the national gaps, with the regional gaps, that's, or even with your local community gaps. That is another way to approach it. Then again, you can also look at peculiar professors in that school, the faculty, leverage on the, on the intellect of the faculty. Find out what are their papers addressing. Every paper addresses a problem. You get, there's always a research gap or a solution or some kind of evaluation policy initiative, uh, um, should I say recommendation they're trying to profile in a particular paper. So exploit those information in the papers of that faculty from the university that you're applying to. Why are you doing this? Because you want to build on the knowledge, because you want to leverage on the knowledge. And for instance, I, I, I could give you quite a good number of mention. Uh, maybe looking back uh, uh, in retrospect, if I were to look at my application, which of course what I'm doing now is MSc administration. So if I were to look back at the essays that I wrote and the motivations that I projected, I could just give you keywords that you could work on or that you could work with. So you could look at issues related to university industry tech transfer. Those have been like critical issues in the Nigerian context, so to say. Look at issues of a graduate employability context. We have so many graduates that are coming out, but they have issues of skills and skills mismatch. I'm just giving you a post. This you could really um, look at if you're in management, so to say. So you could look at also in financial background, there are topical issues you could look at. There are a lot of corrupt practices going on and issues regarding and uh, studies regarding uh, corruption um, practices has not been, they've not been uh, fully exhausted. So your best point is to actually do your homework, but sadly we don't do this homework of actually looking back, looking at the papers that have been written by some of these authors in a peculiar or a particular faculty that you want to look at or you want to study at. And then you go back, you draft an SOP. Just doing something generic would not help you. I, I, I'm sorry, I have to really emphasize so much on this, but then again, uh, try to do something and I mean, the first draft is not always perfect, but to do something first and we can always take it off from there. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, in addition to what uh, Gulok have, Gulok have just said now, uh, Ebuka, have you forgotten that uh, I am original management guy? And- uh, I'm aware. <laughs> so what, what, what is there is that, uh, in addition to what Gulok said, you you could highlight you those of us in management let me give you the secret about those of us in management getting scholarship those of us in management one secret is our professional experiences one our volunteering experiences two and then our leadership experiences because if you come to uh, management, management is all about this whole thing that I just talked about. Leadership, professionalism, networking, and then volunteering. If you have these four things and you're able to, just like uh, Samuel, I will always fall back to what Samuel said, I want to make my point. Those little, little things, those those little those things you did in your undergrad that you feel they are not important. They are all important at this point. Like for instance, I, uh, at least uh, I know you in Michael Barai that you are part of the people that um, the students in those days that uh, 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 handle courses, you know, uh, course rep and all those things. Being a course rep is a very wonderful leadership experience. Being a, a, an SR, SRUC member, being a member of uh, probably having led in maybe in your association, union of the students and all that, these are the things you can bring up together. I tell you, these are the things that I wrote when I was writing for my scholarships. 
because in my undergrad, I was departmental president. In my undergrad, I, I all those years, even before I joined, I entered the Mudike. In my polytechnic, I was depart I was also secretary. I contested for secretary of the department. I eventually, when I got to Mudike, I was also I have I've headed committee of uh, um, what do you call it? Um, Constitution drafting committee. I have been a chairman of that such. Even in my church, um, I have been president of the youth, president of water service. For those of you who are in Catholic church, you know what I mean by water service. I have, I have been, so these are the little, 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 little experiences we had. I have even been a president of region of Mary. All those things, because when they say, articulate your, this or the other one, you just bring them together and it gives you points. So Obina wants to uh, make contribution. Obina, you have the floor. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Maybe you can remove your earpiece because your voice is not so clear. If you are if you're using Bluetooth or earpiece. Can you hear me now? Yes, it's better now. Okay, okay. So uh, I just wanted to thank our speaker, Samuel, for a wonderful presentation he gave to us today. I did not apply for Commonwealth Scholarship. So I don't really have any specific contribution to make, but I mean, I think the young man has already done justice to that, um, to that particular topic. I also want to thank the entire um, team working for- You have muted yourself. You have muted yourself. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you can hear you now. Okay, I mean, I just received the call, sorry about that. So um, I want to thank all the speakers who have um, presented on different topics um, over the entire um, length of this program, starting from Stanley, um, Linda, Eric, good luck, and now Samuel. And I also want to thank all those who have been attending our programs. I took a notice of one young man, Pascal. He has attended all of the programs and <laughs> I really admire his um, motivation and determination to achieve success. And I hope that all of you who have been attending have been able to derive some kind of value from all of these programs that, uh, that is going to help you guys to secure funding and admission in different institutions, probably this year or next year. The, I mean, the thing I want to say to you guys is, some of you may have tried once and it did not work, maybe twice it did not work. All I would say is just keep on pushing, okay? What matters is that at the end, the, at the end, you're going to achieve your dreams, okay? So I want to wish you guys good luck and success in all of your endeavors. Thank you so much. Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, at this point, I think, uh, so I think we have almost exhausted everything we have. And uh, and I believe, Ebuka, I've been able to address your question. Just go back, think of all the yes. things you've done in the past, articulate them together, model them up and fire. You will get there. Uh, I, will, I will definitely look at your SOP very soon. So um, now uh, in closing uh, remarks, I have to first of all, uh, tell you guys that uh, today is the last uh, program we are having. And uh, one of the things uh, we, we are doing here at Edu Africa is to, just like um, uh, uh, I told you guys that Commonwealth application was an eye opener for us to help you guys. And uh, I have to thank in absentia, the common um, somewhere. Please take my my message to some uh, uh, Commonwealth people. Tell them that in as much as they didn't offer us the scholarship, that we we are still doing that which we promised them in our SOP. That we are doing it in the US. We are in our other countries and we are still doing those things we promised them. Uh, so take our message to them. 
So as a, uh, why I say this is because uh, what we are doing in Edward Freak is uh, our plan is to uh, achieve uh, uh, the vision 2030 of uh, SDG. And then our, our focus is on uh, quality education. And as a matter of fact, we have finished this program today and uh, uh, we want to uh, develop uh, impact for measure, I mean, I mean me uh, the, the techniques or how the impact of what we are doing or what we've done so far will be measured. And uh, the step we took to do that was to look, this is our website. So I would want all of us, as we are finishing this program, to visit our website, go to this homepage, click on testimonials, click on this view testimonials. It will take you to a place where you will now click. You go down, you click add testimony. In this place, what we need you to do is to fill this form for us. This is a way of getting feedback from you guys. So from the number of persons that have submitted, just, it's just a few questions, your name, your country, the name of school attended, your social media link, and then add your testimony. So talk about, if you, if you come to this place, talk about how this program has impacted you, how Edward Freak has, whether this program had impact on you or not, and how it has impacted you and how it has made you to. Then you can upload your picture if you wish. So we are gonna publish this on our site for number one, record purposes. Number two, for our stakeholders, to use it as a way of measuring our imp the impact of what we are doing. Just like I told someone, you know, in um, application, in, uh, in common water application, part of the things they do is they ask you, what is the, imp what, imp what is the, how, how the measures Maybe. you're gonna take to measure the impact of what you're doing. So this is the only place, this is the only place the avenue we use to make the number of persons that participate in our program, the number of persons that testify. Because if you look at this page now, you see the people that we have helped. These are not the only people we've helped. These are the people that have submitted so far. They are, they are testimonies. So if you look at this person, he wrote, my name is this and that. I'm currently pursuing bachelor's in university, Korean university in US and all that. So something like that, that's what we need from you. This person said, uh, explain everything. So just talk about what you have done, what, uh, how we have helped you. We will publish it here so that while we are doing this is, we are here to help you guys. It is only you guys that will help us to help you. Because if our stakeholders, whom we are presenting the things we are doing to, decide to uh, look at what we are doing, they will probably come here and see what people are saying. From there, they will measure the impact of what we are doing. And from there, if they have something for you guys, because whatever they are giving, see, let me tell you guys, if, even if they give me 100 million, it's not, it's not gonna give, it's not, it's not for me, it's for you guys. Because what we are doing is for you guys. So we need you guys to fill this place um, we are looking at, we are planning to, we are working with some universities here in the US. Currently, I was just appointed as an ambassador of international students at NIU. And uh, part of the things we are doing now is to see how we can uh, collaborate with NIU to see if there is a way they can help you guys in application fee waiver and all that. These are the things we are doing. We are, we are not sure of anything. The only thing we, we need to do is to, Tell them that these are people who are strong enough to hold these, to come to the school. These are the people we have helped in the past. These are people that have participated in our program. And then another reason you should do this is to sell yourself because part of what we are doing in, in Edu Africa is to sell out our people, the people that are following us. 
we through Edu Africa, we sell you, we push you, we tell them that this person is a, is a strong candidate. We recommend you, it's like a recommendation we are giving for you. And recommend white men, they work with recommendation a lot. So if we if we read, uh, that's what I'm telling you now. If you want to write that thing, take time to write it because at the end of the day, we may not publish everything that people submit. So we may only publish those who have written something that is very touching. It's not, you don't just come and write one word. Uh, thank you, Edgar Africa. No, you need to, you need to practice what you've, what you've learned. You need to tell us how this has impacted you. So it will now make them to know that this, this person can actually write. This person can actually write because part of the reasons they are asking you to write for SOP, to write SOP is to know your writing skills. Writing skills is very important for you to, su to survive in a, in a graduate school. So we are calling on you guys to do that. And I would want you guys to start doing it from now uh, because we need to publish it as quickly as possible. Some people have submitted and we published it here. So we, we, uh, bring, we, we call on you guys to do that as quickly as possible. Um, that is that for that. So uh, trust, do you have, what question do you have or what? Do you have contribution? Yes, I have a question. I have a question. Um, just as you said, for documentation purposes and, and all, especially for LinkedIn and all, for those on LinkedIn, you can go and also connect and then write some stuff on there, tagging the ed ed Educ Africa. So uh, my question is this, is there a certificate for the course kind of um, something so that one can be able to use it and post? Um, Edu Africa, we are, we, 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 you know, like I told you guys, we are, we are a non-profit and we are still on the, on the process of structuring a lot of things in Edu Africa. We are going to seek for some, because why we are doing what we are doing is to get accreditation. We cannot accredit you when a higher body have not accredited us. So if you guys post a lot of things about it, we are making some applications to some bodies currently to see how they are gonna give us visibility we want so that we can be uh, after, because as you can see, the program is impactful. We cannot say that it is impactful and they will believe us. It is only you that will say that it is impactful. It will be more uh, efficient when you say that it is impactful. So you don't need to sing your praise. Let, rather, but let people sing the praise for you. It, it carries a kind of more weight. So um, the issue of uh, uh, giving you a certification or a kind of, we, it's not a problem. We can do that. If you are submitting any application, if you need something from Edu Africa, like you are, we want something that will uh, say that we can prove that you are volunteering. It is something that we can give you kind of a recommendation that you are volunteering Edu Africa and this is what, what you are doing. And we can only do that when we see you that you are following. Just like Obina said, there was this young man, Pascal, that he spotted. Me, I know him, but I don't want to talk until Obina spotted him recently. Pascal will always be in our program. So if such a person comes and asks Edu Afri to authenticate whatever he wants to do, definitely we will do that because we are taking records. So one, one of the reasons we said, do that on our website is to have records. So if you you can you can have can even have the link of Edu Africa. I mean our website where because when we when we, we post your pictures or you post your this thing, you can use it as like I always tell you guys that I have participated in so 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 program. Just like what I told you guys last week, how you prove how you have participated in different programs, you can post links of the programs we have participated in. So if you post the link of Edu Africa that I participated in the skill acquisition, six week skill acquisition program of Edu Africa, and 
we publish it on our site, it is already a very strong commendation for you. If you are applying for anything, you put it that you apply for this and you got so, so, so skills. And most of the things we have done, all the six programs we've done, the records are there in our site. These people carry out research. They carry out a kind of background check in anything you submit. They can go to there and check the program, the quality of the program. That's why the kind of people we bring to speak to you guys are not ordinary anyhow people. If you look at all the speakers that have spoken so much so, 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 so far, they are not ordinary people we picked from the street. These are strong guys who are making impact in their different hosts and home countries. So uh, part of the reasons for this program is to authenticate your admission and scholarship applications. So it is you that will help yourself. If you submit, and you submit something that is not just submitting, but submit something that is good for us to publish. We don't publish anything. It's not everybody that, that will submit that will publish. We will read it and read it and see. And, and we're not going to edit it because it is your own word, not our word. So if you want to write it, write it very well for good publication. Most of the people that you see that have been published, they are not the only people that have submitted. There are some people that submitted. I skipped them because I don't know what they are writing. So we don't just publish any house in our site because we are, we are also presenting it to stakeholders and professors. So please, uh, it is in your, in your hands to decide what you want. And uh, we thank you guys so much. Um, another thing is our next program. Our next program, um, you know, currently, like I told you guys, um, who, is, who is this person? Currently, uh, our next, we have ended the six weeks program, but that does not mean that we have ended. We continue. The programs comes up. Uh, maybe, uh, we, fix, we fix programs according to what is obtainable. Currently, I think what is obtainable right now is people, a lot of people traveling, traveling, traveling. So far, by God's grace, I know that not less than 15 to 20 persons have gotten their visas through Edward Freak, through these resources we are providing. So we are planning next thing to do now is to organize a one-day uh, webinar for all the people that are traveling, where we will give them advice on, uh, on um, immigration issues, traveling and documents they need to use while traveling. I think that one will come sometime within the middle of July. I will let you guys know through our WhatsApp uh, platform when that one will take place. Uh, and you know, the position that I currently have in NIU has also given me the addition, uh, uh, more addition to upscale in my services, not just to NIU students, in fact, mainly NIU students, but uh, by extension, uh, other students following Edward Free Scholars. So our next program will come, come up within the middle of July. Um, then at this juncture, I have to tell you guys that currently Edward Freak, we, we are in the process of uh, uh, structuring the, the nonprofit and also giving it a, a global recognition. And in the process of that, we're having some issues with names. We might not, at a point, we might have a new name, but it is still going to be around what you guys know. Um, we are working on having a new name, which we, will go, we are going to announce very soon to you guys, but it is still Edward Freak. But it may not be Edu Africa scholars. It may be Edu Africa whatever. Uh -huh. So we are coming up with that, and very soon you will hear from us on that because uh, there are a lot of uh, processes we are following back the stage. Back. You guys may not uh, be required to know for now. So thank you guys. I want to first of all, uh, in my vote of thanks, thank God Almighty. God has made it possible, possible for us to start this program start this from June 4th till today, being July 8th. And we are coming to an end and we had no challenge while we were doing this program. 
So may his name be praised. We, we are, I'm very happy that it's ending well. And at the same time, I want to thank my team. I have a very wonderful team members. My co-founder, um, co good luck, Ademoko. He has been a very wonderful friend, right from Nigeria. And uh, we were attended the same school. We were strong. This scholarship did jack thing. We, uh, we, we worked together. We were, and that is one of the reasons we started this um, um, Edu Afric. I always advise you guys, try to work with each other. While we, that's why we are looking at naming this in Edu Afric Connect, when you connect with each other. You connect with each other. So uh, when you connect with each other, it helps you a lot because you can this we can share experiences together. In those days, I remember what was happening in those days. If I'm if I see opportunities appear, I'll just send the guy this, the link. If he sees, you just send me back. We will start applying. During the application, we'll be asking ourselves questions. How did you address this question? How do you address this question? You know, that is collaboration, that is networking. It will help you a lot to succeed. So I thank him so much for his contribution so far. And I thank my team members, other members of the team. I thank uh, uh, Ubina very much. Ubina is a very wonderful guy, right from Nigeria. And then we are here in the US and uh, we are doing this together. I'm very, very happy that all of them are contributing in one way or the other to the growth of young people in Africa. And uh, my technical team, the IT guys, uh, Fernando, thank you so much. Um, I want to introduce uh, another person recently, we, uh, um, Alex Chineke. He's going to be the official MC of uh, Edu Afric. Edu. So any program so we are doing, you will be moderating it. He's a very wonderful guy. If you go to our website, read his, read his profile. And then one of the reasons, we, one of the things we are doing here is to also tell you guys, recommend people that you can work with and reliable people. We don't just bring any help people. That's why we say, we don't just post anything you bring. So at Edu Afric, these are the things we do. So I want to thank other team members, my facilitators. Oh, they are very wonderful guys. You know, the people that facilitated these programs, every time I go to their DM, disturbing them. You know, it reminded me of when I was in Nigeria, when I organized conference, how I used to do those days. Anytime I'm gonna, I'm, uh, I invited a, 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 a speaker, the way I bombard his phone with calls, messages and all that. So my heart is always on the high tension, bleeding. So the way I disturb them, but they still made out their time to be part of the program and to, you know, it's not easy to do a PowerPoint presentation. No? If you think it is easy, try it on your own. But they will always come down, do a PowerPoint presentation, and do a very nice rendition. So they are, I commend them so much. These are facilitators whom I always call, sometimes for them to advise during uh, interviews. If you go to our site, you see our facilitators there. These are the guys, sometimes I will even just call them on phone. I beg, can you be part of our, 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 our this thing tomorrow? Uh, it's something that I'm, I have fixed the time tomorrow. I've tell, I will just tell him, I will just say, okay, 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 no problem. Despite their tight schedule, they are still making our time for you guys. So I thank them so much and I thank them for their contributions. Uh, I pray that God will all reward them in, all, in one way or the other. In fact, as a matter of God, as a matter of fact, God is rewarding us. And we thank God for rewarding us. So um, to you guys, you guys are great and wonderful people. And then I want to also congratulate in a special way all the people that have gotten their scholarships and their admissions and gotten their, their visas. Like I always tell you guys, whenever they come to tell, to tell me I have gotten a visa, I would always tell them, thank God, I am only but an instrument of God. It is not me that gave you the scholarship. It is God that gave you the scholarship because it is God's grace. I only did my own part as a human being. The rest, we are done by God. So uh, what we do in Edu Africa, we train you to train others. So we encourage you, as we have helped you, please don't forget others. 
that are coming, most of you guys are coming to US. At least I know that not less than 10 persons are coming to, have gotten their visas already. And then I know that about seven to eight persons are still in the pipeline to get their visas. So if everybody gets their visa, it means that Edo Africa alone brought not less than 20 persons to US in 2023. It is something that we give God the glory. So as the 20 persons, not just in US, but we have other people in other countries that we've helped. So as you are coming to US, know that you are coming not just for yourself, but for your community, for your host country and for your home country. And if you come to US, please, I advise you, I've always advised you guys, focus on what you have come here to do. As you can see, if not for my focus, I wouldn't have been where I am today in this United States. If someone tells me that I will be in a position that I am in charge of all the international students, I wouldn't have believed this when I was in Nigeria. But today, I am representing the international students coming to NIU. So it means that every international student coming here, I have uh, 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 the, the opportunity to interact with them. They can reach out to me and tell me their issues and I will be able to solve it for them. I'm working with international office. So it's a very great, it's an honor to me. And if you, if I can get there, you can also get even to a bigger position. What you need to do is when you come to US, follow, there's a general thing that the people say in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in our pidgin language, follow people where no road. Follow people where no road. Just try to know, just to follow people that have the information. What I'm trying to say is information is power. And I wish you guys good luck as you plan to call. Um, Ebuka, can you now give end or end the vote of thanks from your end? Okay. If, yeah. Okay, this is uh, another privilege today. Today I'm having a very strong network. So, <laughs> I want to I want to sincerely thank you, Mr. Stan, first and foremost, for coming up with this idea of uh, Edo Afrique. It is it's not easy because most of the times, one what, what thing I, I believe so much is most people are so who are poor today. Let me use that word: are poor not because they don't have opportunities, but because they don't have someone who can lead them. So taking it upon yourself to not just liberate. It was not just the bread and tears, not just to the bread, but to the bread Africa and the whole world is, is a good thing. I'm really, really grateful. May God continue to replenish you and may you never lack. I, I want to also sincerely thank all our facilitators, Madam Linda, uh, Mr. O.B. Franklin, uh, Mr. Sami, uh, Mr. If I can remember all of them, I'm really, really grateful. Uh, being here is one of the is the best thing. I say being in Little Africa is is a good thing. And then attending the programs is one of the best things that can ever happen to someone in this 2023. So we are really really grateful on behalf of the participants. One thing I want to also advise uh, my fellow participants is this: the joy of these people is the testimonies we bring every day. So don't give up. It's not going to be easy. We keep going. So at the end of the day. Continuity will be there. Maybe we now have patrons and metrons. God bless each and every one of you. We are really, really grateful. And we promise to keep in touch and also to keep doing our own part. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for thanking us. As you are thanking us, we are planning on more and more and more and more. Like I said, our next webinar will be for people that are traveling to US and other countries. We're gonna let you guys know when the date will be. Uh, thank you, Samuel, in a special way. You are a very wonderful guy. And uh, I've, I've always said it that you are a perfect gentleman. So thank you for the time you have actually given, the way you have tried to adjust your time to be in this program. You are a very wonderful guy. Thank you, good luck so much for your contributions for your invaluable 
and insightful uh, contributions to this program. Yeah, so um, I should be expecting your replies. I mean, your um, testimonies. I should be expecting it between now and tomorrow being Sunday. We are expecting it. Flood it there, just submit it. We will get it. And I, like I said, try to write something that is meaningful. If you don't write anything, if you don't write something that is meaningful, we may not publish it. I'm sorry to say that. So you don't just write anything. We, we are trying to, we are getting people who knows what they want, what, what they actually want to do. What they are, we, we want to get people who knows where they are heading to. Like I always say, Edu Africa, our vision is to build the largest network of scholars from Africa who will make change, who will bring change, the desired change we have been looking for in our whole continent. So please, as we do this, as we try to help you, help yourselves, and I pray that we will have more and more and more testimonies of scholarships, admissions, and visas in the year 2024. Thank you guys for your participation and may God be with you guys.